AMD is a powerhouse. This is a stock analysis. This is Stocker Finance. I'm your host, David Shore. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Stocker Finance or support the channel at patreon.com slash Stocker Finance. So Advanced Micro Devices, Inc. is currently trading at $85.28 a share. It's ticker symbols AMD. Over the past five years, it's up over 4,000%. This stock has been on an absolute rampage, and that really happened once its CEO, Lisa Su, took over. And I actually talked about it a lot in the last analysis of this company, if you want to go ahead and check that one out as well. But there's been a lot of new news that has come out, some acquisition potentially happening, and just some really interesting stuff, as well as the stock's been on a tear recently. Since the uh, the downfall or the pandemic, pandemic low there in uh, in March it is up about 118% recovered to new all-time highs it's on its way towards $100 a share. Its market cap is currently $100 billion US dollars with a PE ratio, a very high PE ratio of 165. No dividend offered as well. And its 52-week high was $94.28 with a 52-week low of $29.38. And that 52-week high, that surge has to do with a few different things. They've released a lot of new chips. There's been a lot of positive news for the company. Its earnings were rather solid. And also, its competitors have been struggling, especially Intel had a bunch of flop with the chip it has not been performing as well either but i'm not going to talk about that as much in this video since that is uh that's past news as of now but let's move on here and if i the first thing i want to do is just go ahead and take a look at intel corporation because a lot of people are wondering how far can amd go it's worth a hundred billion dollars now you know four thousand percent over the fi past five years basically over a thousand percent the past year or actually i don't know it was a thousand percent over the past year but a significant surge over the past year it seems not too long ago that it was trading at, you know, just like $20 a share. And that was awesome. And the next thing you know, it's at $30, 40, 50, 60, 70, now over $80 a share, as high as 90, nearly $100 a share. But the thing is, Intel's corporation here, obviously a significantly, you know, large company with a PE ratio of just nine instead of 145. Um, or what was that again? Uh, 165, actually. But its market cap is 228.9 billion. If we go to a much more similar hyped up company that also has a stock that's very in demand with a PE ratio over 100, 104.5, actually. But NVIDIA has a market cap of 352 billion. It also offers a dividend of 0.11%. So there's a lot of market share for AMD to potentially take from these companies as well as others. It's also got a lot of room to grow because it really these companies really show how big a company like this can get. And with the execution of the executive team at AMD with chip releases, uh, the chips that are going to be in the PS5 as well as the Xbox Series X coming out this winter, that's going to drive sales and uh, you know make a lot of profit for AMD and uh, drive up revenue as well. But before we get into some of those uh, other details, let's go quickly and just run through the financials here. First off, we're going to take a look at just revenue and operating income revenue continues to hold steady and growing as well same with gross profit which continues to grow operating income about the same as well net income continues to grow and actually kind of stay steady as of right now no surprise with the situation that's going on but i expect that this winter it'll pick up significantly since more people need to buy computers and more computers means more processing more chips needed uh you know more video games are being played they just released a new chip that's designed for gamers etc people are staying home it's a perfect time to release that chip since gamers are going to be wanting to build new pcs upgrade their setup and uh, you know computers are becoming even more increasingly important with everyone working from home playing more video games just spending way more time on their screens than ever before if we continue on here we can see the margins will continue to increase it's a really great sign and one you know negative aspect to amd here i will say is that his profit margin is really really low at just eight percent its gross margin stays significantly high at about 45 percent and its operating margin stays just about there with its profit margin. However, an acquisition that is going to come soon, we'll talk about this in a second here, might be able to increase that profit margin, which would definitely benefit AMD significantly. Operating expenses continue to grow as well. It's no surprise though, since they're doing a ton of research and development right now. A lot of things going on over at AMD with developing new chips and research and development is the main operating expense, as you can see by this chart here. So it's nothing too much to worry about. You know, you never really want to see operating expenses is increasing a company but when they're spending tons of money on R&D researching new chips trying to keep ahead of their competitors or at least stay on par with them uh, it's pretty important 
and that means operating expenses is not necessarily something to worry about let's move on to growth here see so our growth slow a little bit in q20 from uh, q120 but still growing by 26 percent year over year in terms of revenue growth and uh, operating expenses grew a little bit less than revenue growth as well which is nice to see before that it was surging their growth was as high as 50 percent revenue growth year over year as of q4 2019 then it slowed down to about uh, 40 percent revenue growth as of q1 2020 still excellent growth there that's exactly what we like to see quarter over quarter or year over year their cash reserves are booming right now this last quarter they had results of 1.775 billion us dollars in cash a really absurd amount of cash to have on hand right now not enough for the acquisition that they're trying to make right now so they will have to take on some debt for that and again i'm going to get to that in a second here but it's really nice to see they're able to keep that much cash on hand especially in these uncertain times let's move on here and let's talk about the acquisition now i'm really sorry if i butcher the name of this company and i pronounce it here i think it's pronounced xilinx xilinx i might be horribly wrong on that please comment below if i'm wrong i'm sorry this might be a little cringy let's go ahead and take a look at this company here so it is a semiconductor manufacturer it's currently worth 28.81 billion it's a publicly traded company here over the past five years it is up 150 percent so a very nice return over the past five years has a dividend of 1.29 percent 52 week high of 123 dollars and 78 cents with a 52 week low of 67 dollars and 68 cents and that low is not during the pandemic significantly before that uh actually never mind it might be during the pandemic i'll have to relook at that up really quickly i think that is the case actually anyways back to the video sorry about that little mistake there with a pe ratio 46.16 so let's talk about this acquisition there's been a lot of mixed feelings on it some are saying the finances just don't make sense it's a good acquisition but the finances of it just don't make sense it's way too expensive this is a 30 billion dollar potential acquisition it could be more than that in fact actually so amd will need to use a lot of debt it'll need to do have some crazy financing there you know 30 billion dollars only has you know what was that again if we go back to how much cash they have on hand 1.775 billion that's nowhere near 30 billion that's needed so they'll have to use debt but this could be a long-term benefit for amd i think you know they're in advanced talks right now it seems very likely that this go is going to happen there's fpga opportunity there's 5g opportunity involved in this uh, xilinx has better cash flow and better margins which could help amd if we take a look at that right here you can see the gross profit margin for xilinx is significantly greater at 67 percent compared to amd's 44 percent same with operating margin they're at 24 percent amd AMD at 11%. If we go at profit margin, I was talking about that earlier. AMD is at around 7 or 8%, whereas Xilinx is at 21%. And then free cash flow, even. You know, Xilinx has over a billion dollars in free cash flow, while AMD is stuck down at $611 million. And although AMD is increasing on all these metrics here, they're improving over time, whereas Xilinx has been decreasing on some of them, it's still significantly higher than AMD's metrics. So, if these metrics were to merge together, let's say, that would be a huge benefit for AMD and help them out significantly. And, and, and instead, um, sorry, fumbled my words there, especially when it comes to the, the margins there. So if we move on here, they also have a cash position of $3 billion, which exceeds their total debt of $2 billion, which is great to see. And it also just shows AMD wants to become a larger player. You know, again, if we go all the way back to the beginning of this video when I was comparing the AMD to Intel and to NVIDIA, their market caps, you know, they still dominate AMD in terms of their market cap. You know, with $300 billion with uh, NVIDIA, over $200 billion with Intel. So because of that, it, I think this is really showing that AMD wants to become a very, you know, significant large player and although this might be an expensive acquisition i think long term the benefits from it are going to benefit amd i really trust in amd ceo lisa sue she turned the whole company around and has really turned it into what it is today changed the whole outlook of the company their strategy everything and i really trust in her decision making skills i'm sure she'll be able to conjure up a deal but for now we can just sit back and wait if you are invested in amd it's a very interesting time for the company very exciting time for the company as well if we go into this a brief little analysis summary, it's really short here. It's not undervalued for sure. I know I do a lot of companies based on value investing principles and AMD is not one of those companies. It is not undervalued. However, it's a very popular stock that's high in demand. Hence why its PE ratio is so incredibly high right now. Investors are pricing in future scenarios. This includes the PS5 and Xbox Series X, which AMD has its chips in, the acquisition as well, which is good in my opinion. Others might disagree with me. Let me know your opinion on that acquisition or potential acquisition in the comments below.
below. Lisa Sue is also just a powerhouse of a CEO. She's an absolute goddess, and she's been just charging C uh, AMD forward, leading the company to new heights. AMD also just continues with continued growth over time on almost all metrics, which is great to see. I know we saw a little bit of a brief slowdown in net income there. I know we didn't see a quarter over quarter growth there, but that's nothing to worry about. I would love to see margins improve, especially profit margins, and perhaps this acquisition can do that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Check out these videos as well. I'll be back with more videos, or at least a new video next Thursday, or this coming Thursday, actually. You can follow me on Twitter at Stalker Finance, patreon.com slash Stalker Finance if you want to support the channel. Peace out.